There's the scar right there. You get it? All right. All right, folks. This is handsome. He's a coming five-year-old thoroughbred. I'm going to do a new chapter on our YouTube. And I think that, you know, we've been at this a couple years now, and I want to do the groundwork with this thoroughbred. And I want to share what I'm seeing, because I think according to the emails, which we love getting, there's a lack of, of uh, understanding what a horse is thinking. And I'm no genius by no means, but I just want to, I'm just going to work this horse just like regular day. And he's got no confidence. He's gentle. There's no buck or nothing, but he doesn't have any confidence outside Lori, our friend that rides for us. She said he'll go outside, but he's always looking. And when I rode him, when I first took him to Lori, he was pretty, pretty tough pushing on the bridle. No zero collection. Well, the scar you saw on the left side of his tongue, that's from a bit. And so that tells you right off the bat that there's going to be a, a mental block there about something in his mouth. So I'm going to be hanging my bit on him. And I'm going to turn him loose and just start working him. And I'm going to be paying attention to the cricket. And it's going to help me through this process of letting me know when he relaxes. Because part of what his brain's telling me so far is that when the human catches you, if they don't feed you and they're going to ride you, then you feel pressured. Something's going to go wrong. Well, the scar tells part of the story. Now, please bear in mind, he's not a rescue. I didn't rescue him. I bought him. He's fine. He doesn't need group. He doesn't need anything. He just got his tongue cut through poor riding. And I want to get him to understand the concept of collection, which is going to come here and here. And I'm going to start by getting a good foundation on the ground and building his confidence. Because if I get his brain, the percentage of his brain is not with me. i got to change that percentage. So that's where, that's where we're headed on this deal. Right there, you know, the horse that... When this is over, he should reach for the bit. I learned that from a good workhorse man, that a good a good workhorse will just reach for the bit when you offer it. And that's what hopefully this horse will do. Now, part of my quest is to think out loud and, and share with you what I'm thinking. Now to start off, I've got one little wrinkle right here. And the reason is, is because I want him to not feel compelled to stick his tongue over the bit. And later on, when I decide he's more comfortable, I'll drop it down a little lower. But for now, he absolutely doesn't know what to do on the ground. So I'm gonna show him and the first thing he has to understand is separation. A horse like him thinks if he stays here, he'll be all right. So I'm going to send him. So you see how he leaves. He leaves like it was a big deal. So what's going to happen in this first lesson? I'm going to rope him around the neck. But I'm also, I'm going to, when my back is to the camera, I'm going to show you my demeanor and how it's going to stop him right now. Okay, if you'll notice my shoulders went down. So this time I'm going to add exhaling with it when I come around. His left ear is watching me. And maybe he's been lunged, I don't know, but I'm getting ready to set it up again. This time I'm going to exhale and lower my shoulders. Now I'll step back, and his head turned the other way. I'm going to step away from him, keep my hands below my belt, 
So mine went to the other horse. Now I'll exhale, step back. He went off the rail about a foot and a half. So that means something. So now I'll pull away. And so I have another horse outside the krill. I'm going to catch it and tie it up because I need, I need to increase my percentages with the time spent with the horse. And folks, what I'm doing is I'm trying to work this horse. I'm talking about it per batum as things happen. So I'm going to ask him to leave again, same direction, and see if I can get him to leave without bursting out of here. Just leave. That's all you need to do. Just leave. Now set it up again. I'll relax. Now I'm just making a mental note of how long it takes for him to stop. What you're watching is something that's been trained into a horse. There. It's called mindlessly wandering. His left ear stays on me. Now my right hand is going to go for his hip and ask him to leave. That time he walked off. If you notice the height of the skull, that's a big deal to me. Now I brought my hands up and my shoulders up a little higher. I'm going to ask him to leave. Now, you see he's walking pretty nice. He's not trotting. His head isn't up real high. So now I'm going to lower my hands again and exhale and put my mind somewhere else. I'm just thinking about the clouds heading north. Leave. Now something I haven't done is left where I'm standing. I'm asking him to stop now. So what he's, what he's showing me is that I get it. I'm still bothered, but I get it. I don't have to trot. I don't have to jog. My skull can stay low. Now, leave. All right, now when he comes on the opposite side of the corral, I'm going to turn and step into in front of his eye and ask him to stop. Now I'm in front of the eye. Now if he'll turn his head towards me with my exhale, I can take the pressure off. Now what I haven't heard is the cricket. So when I took the pressure off just now the cricket rolled. Now I'm going to walk up to him and see if the cricket stops. So there you go. Now there you go. Just mean that Pat's out here having fun with his horse. And by the way, I'm trying to get this horse to understand that he's not going to get his tongue cut ever again. It's not going to happen. You're going to be fine. I'm a fair leader. What he's doing is he, his mind goes into mechanical mode. Some people call it lunging, which is mindlessly wandering. Now I'm going to ask him to leave. And as I stand here, I can walk towards his head or his hip. I'm going to walk towards his hip and only raise my hand if I have to. And I want him to leave. You need to leave. Here it comes. Now please understand that the reason he stood as far as I'm concerned is because he felt safe there. There was no pressure on him. 
Now I'm going to do the same thing again. Hands down, shoulders down, exhale. Offering, offering. Getting in the eye. Now please understand there's behind the eye, even with the eye, and in front of the eye. Right now I'm in front of his eye. That's what stopped him. Right now I'm even with his eye. Now if I want him to leave, I'll get behind his eye. That's a horse with flight. Okay, this is what I was talking about another level. I don't want to have to be moving around the crow with my body to make this done. I want to get it done through my breathing. So now I'm going to relax and offer it. Step into the eye. Walk away. Now I'm going to take the stance of Gil Faber and just relax. And I'd like him to lower his skull and roll the cricket. If he does, then now we have a conversation. If he doesn't, it doesn't mean I failed. It just means that he hasn't changed his mind. You see his left ear still on me? There, that's what I was waiting to see. Now, if you'll notice, the left front foot did come towards me. And what I'm getting at is this isn't a mean horse. He's not standing there shivering, scared to death. What he is is a horse that's never had been able to communicate with a human. And so I'm kind of offering him that chance. Now, I'm not going to change directions yet. As I walked to him, the cricket kept rolling. Now I'm going to ask him to leave. And we've all seen groundwork done 7,000 different ways. What I want to do is I, I don't really want to use my riata. I just want to be able to have the horse feel comfortable about just being fine. And once again, I believe that if you come in like a carnival worker, they're going to act like you're a carnival worker. If you come in all puffed out and ready to fight, they're going to say, fine, bring it on. I need to turn his skull so I can just pull and exhale. You watch that left ear there. And when the head went back, it went down a half an inch. Now, bear in mind, I've been doing this long enough to where I feel compelled to share every single thing I know. About a month ago, I got humbled pretty good, and I want everybody to know everything I know. Now, if this puts you to sleep, I don't care. If it's something that interests you, I do care. And if you've never seen it before, then I'm glad I got to show it to you. So now, Riata, left hand. Pressure. Hip, hip, leave. Now this is why there's a difference between a carrot stick and nothing. They know when you don't have it. Now, Riata, loading up, leave. That's the difference, folks, between a stick and a no stick. A flag and no flag. I need this horse to move off of my hand and then later on with no Riata at all. I'm asking. Now see, this is the beauty of not riding. I'm asking. I'm kicking. Here comes the spur. Here it comes. Thank you. Okay, so I make a mental note how long it took for that horse to move his feet. Now I'm going to go with him, with my body. Take the Riata out of my right hand. Prepare and release. You need to turn your skull toward me. See that left ear? 
You know, I will let more out of my body and take more pressure off. Now, please believe me, this isn't something you do for 25 years. This is just all little things that I want to share with you so I can get this horse to move off of my body. Okay, that's how far away it took to get that. Okay, that's over. In other words, you can put a halter on a horse and do much of anything you want to do. I'm trying to get this horse to move off of a field. Now you need to leave. Here it comes. I'm telling you, here it comes. This is what a fair leader does to a student. I don't care which way he turns. Here it comes. Switch eyes, my friend. Thank you. Now you notice the height of the skull going the other direction. It started off higher. My job is to get it lower than that top rail. Now he's going back to his old ways. That's because it's the other side of the brain. Tail's out. Head is high. I'm down you horse. You don't need to worry about it. Now folks, I don't give voice commands. I'm thinking out loud. I'm trying to take every bit of energy out of my body. There. You don't have to do that. That's mindlessly wandering. I've watched a lot of people with a lunge whip on the ground and a lunge line on their head so they can hold their Big Mac with the other hand and it's just annoying to pick up the whip. So when the Big Mac is ingested, then you can pick the whip up again. Now you see the tongue coming out? No matter what you've heard, Pat's personal belief is when the tongue doesn't come out, the horse has made it. When the tongue comes out the end of the head, it's nerves. He's wondering what, what's going to happen. I'm going to say, I really need you to leave right now. Now my demeanor changes. Here it comes. You need to leave. Don't make me put my spur on you. Here it comes. Thank you so much. I mean it. Now he's thinking. Do you see that hesitation? Skull's going down a little bit to the height of the pipe. My mind is checked out so I can let him relax. I will turn, put my energy towards him, and say, You're fine. Now, I'm going to take all the pressure off you so you can turn your skull. You're fine. Did I mention you're fine? Now, there's no building on fire and there's no child drowning. There's nothing out there to look at. This is the right side of the horse. I'll step up, right ear, step back. I'm asking, horse. Thank you so much. You're fine, don't worry about it. Now, once again, there is no cricket. It's going to get there. It's up to the human, which would be me, to convince him that it's okay to trust a human one more time. He just dropped his skull. So this is the kind of stuff that, that I really want to share with everybody. And I'll just say it one more time and I'll be done talking about that. If you want to take it to another level, I believe this is another level. And I'm taking all the pressure off of that horse. And while we're at it, there's a Canadian that sent, sent Deb and I a package. 
And Gordon, we thank you from the bottom of our heart. And I got two confusing things going on that I want to share with you. One of them is, is that a friend sent me an email. I get a lot of emails from Canada, okay, and it's not even winter. So it's kind of amazing. But anyway, the, the Morgan horse, which was a man's name in Vermont, prior to the name being put on the horse, they came down from Canada. And evidently, a lot of them came down post-Civil War, during, excuse me, during the Civil War. And the breed was a gift from the King of France. And he sent a bunch of horses over to Canada to the colonists as a gift to get them started in their colonies. So that particular horse had been around for quite a while. Now what they call it, I don't know what they called it then, but it turned into the Morgan. And if you ever look at some of the statues from the Civil War, a lot of them are Morgan horses. And so I guess my point is, is that it was a gift from France went down to New England and became a Morgan horse. So that kind of connects a dot on the beginning. Now here's the one that's got me puzzled because everybody knows by now I like connecting dots on American horses. Sebastian, he lives in Botswana. It's just north of Dallas. He said that the horses that came with the conquistadors were not Andalusians. If I got this right, I could be dead wrong. And what he meant was, was that King Philip, Philip in 1567 made a statement that this is in fact a breed and he, he put the names on it, he put the pedigrees put the papers on them, so to speak. But the Andalusian had been a popular horse all over Europe. So that's 1567. Cortez landed on Veracruz in 1519. Okay, Sebastian's telling me that the horses in North America and Central America that the conquistadors brought came from Europe. And that the horses that went to South America came from North Africa and were Arab crosses. Okay, so the breed, the Andalusian, or what we call an Iberian horse, was in the 18th century when they started a lot of them coming over. Well, okay, this may get confusing. I hope it is to you because it's damn sure confusing to me. Because I can't see us, uh, we've been to Spain, and if there's a ship down there on the coast and it's getting ready to go to America, Spain and Portugal have quite a few horses and I would think they would have got local horses from their military or whatever they got and loaded them on the ships and brought them. So I don't know if it's somatics we're talking about or what, but it's another mystery to be solved and I know that somebody will write to me and solve them like all the ones that, I mean that thing about the ambler and telling me they come out of Portugal, that was pretty cool. And um, other than that, this thing with Handsome here, it's going to be an ongoing project, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. So, there you go. He's got a foot cocked, and there's no pressure on him. And what I want to hear is eventually that cricket will go intermittently, slow, because he's got a brain block about his tongue, and I don't blame him. So, there's what, there's what we're working on right there. Thank you.